Mr. Sebi, of course, was born Alfredo Bowman on November 26, 1933, in the village of Lalanga in Spanish Honduras. Dr. Sebi never attended school, not even kindergarten. Instead, he took cues on being obedient to the procession of life from his beloved grandmother, Mama Hay. Dr. Sebi's mom had to leave her young son with his grandmother to obtain work in another town. His early days of play and observation by the river and in the forest, coupled with guidance from his grandmother, afforded Dr. Sebi the foundation to be obedient to the truth in his later life. Dr. Sebi went to the United States as a self-educated man who was diagnosed with asthma, diabetes, impotence, and obesity. After unsuccessful treatments with conventional doctors, Dr. Sebi was led to a herbalist. That herbalist was in Mexico. Finding great healing success from all his ailments, he began creating natural vegetation cell food compounds geared for intercellular cleansing and the revitalization of all the cells that make up the human body. Inspired by the personal healing experience and knowledge he gained, he began sharing the compounds with others which gave birth to the USHA Research Institute, Dr. Sebi LLC, and the USHA Healing Village located in Honduras. Dr. Sebi is a pathologist, herbalist, biochemist, and naturalist. He has studied and personally observed herbs in America, Latin America, Africa, and the Caribbean, and has developed a unique approach to healing with herbs that is firmly rooted in over 30 years of practical experience. Today we welcome to the studios of IRFM and to Jamaica, world-renowned herbalist and naturalist Dr. Sebi, born Alfredo Bowen, Bowman in Honduras, growing up mainly with his grandmother. He joins us now live inside of the Africa Forum. We greet you, Dr. Sebi. Good morning. Welcome to the Africa space, the oh, African-centered space. Thank you so very, very extremely much. We're very happy. To I'm happier. To, <laughs> to have you in this space. And we want to, want to especially welcome you to Jamaica. We know that this is your first time to Jamaica because we've been trying to get you here forever. So we know it's your first time. So welcome. Welcome to Jamaica. Thank you so very extremely much because uh, I always want to come to Jamaica. Yes. For many, many reasons. Right. And I've heard you uh, in, in, in the video um, that you did, the promotional video coming into Jamaica, make reference to the land of Marcus Garvey. Tell me about your interest and your knowledge of Mualimu Marcus Mazaya Garvey. You see... I grew up in a house that was Garvey, all the way. Nothing else, just Garvey. I didn't, I've never been to school. I've never been to church. All I heard was Garvey. Garvey, Garvey, Garvey. Out of, by listening to Garvey, and I began to pay attention later on in my life to the history of this man. And in traveling, I found out that Mr. Garvey, Mr. Marcus Garvey was the only individual, and I'm going to repeat it. He was the only individual that came to his race with something that was pragmatic. He was the only one that came trying to make the reconnection again because he saw, he saw the value in that. He could understand that. You know, it's like China. Today, China is the richest country in the world. But Chinese speak Chinese, they eat Chinese, they think Chinese, they worship Chinese. We need to go to Garvey to think black, 
worship black, work with black, and love black. It's no crime in that. Everybody else does it, just the laws of nature. Garvey was at the center of my life all through my 82 years on this planet. When I went to Africa and I spoke to the presidents, many presidents, they too told me that they were admirers of Garvey and that he was their mentor. So I can't see why we had problem with Garvey. We should bring him back. We should resurrect Garvey because he's the only one that came with a pragmatic program. In fact, I'm not a member of any black organization and I will never be a, a member of any one of them. Why? Because they come with things that are unrelated to our condition. Garvey came with the answer. There you go. Well said. Thank you so much for that. We're going to be talking about his, um, his ancestors in a little while as we talk about China in Jamaica. So interesting that you should make that connection as we talk to Minister Omar Davis. But we want to talk a little bit about your early life leading up to being diagnosed with asthma, diabetes, impotence and obesity and when and where you were treated because it started with you. Yes. When I was 30... I found myself already impotent, two years, I was impotent at 28, had diabetes at 27, born with asthma, angry, very angry. I mean, I was very angry, extremely angry. Being that I was a merchant seaman, I traveled to Russia, England, France, all over Europe, and I went to meet these doctors because I was breaking down sick every time I, tr I find myself on the ship. Finally, someone called me and told me, go to Mexico. Mexico? Why should I go to Mexico? Yeah, there's a man there that would heal you. And lo and behold, I went to Mexico. And what I'm about to find in Mexico, there has not been any black anthropologist. There have never been a black historian or anyone that is interested in the last 50 years in blackness that mentioned to me what this man did. He sat me down and he said, do you have any idea why you are sick? I said, no, if I did, I wouldn't be. Mm. He said, well, that makes sense. He said, do you think that God was drunk when he put black people in Africa? I said, nope. Okay. Well, when he put black people in Africa, he put a food. And he put a mandate. Do you know the food of the black man? I said, sure, rice and beans and potatoes and yam. He said, not so. Not so. That's not the food of the black people. That's why you're sick. If you were eating the food that your great-grandparents ate way back in the jungles of Africa, you would have never been sick because they didn't have any doctors or medicine. So you are sick now. So what are we going to begin with? We're going to remove all meats and glucose from your body, from your diet. And that's what happened. Here I am now. 52 years later, healed by a Mexican mm -hmm. that knew more than anyone in the world, then and now. What that man healed me of 52 years ago, no one is doing it today. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about that, it sounds pretty simple, because it was a one-liner you said, we're going to remove from your diet all meat and glucose. That's it. And here you are. And that sounds pretty simple. Is it as simple as it sounds? It's as simple as that. You see, we want to complicate things. Why? I don't know. <laughs> or who complicated them. Mm -hmm. But I never live a life of complication until I was 30. I lived complicated until 30. After 30, it was easy. Mm -hmm. See, I was impotent. I was impotent at 30. And the man said to me, if you listen to me, you're going to make babies in your 70s. I say, you're out of your mind. He said, I may be out of my mind, but you're crazy also. Because you have not even the slightest, faintest idea as to what your parents ate in the jungles of Africa. And you should know these things. I said, but you know, I couldn't know them because look at what they did to me. They removed me from Africa. They made me a slave. They took away my food. They changed my clothes. They put clothes on me. They did everything to me. What you want me to do? You say, okay, you're going to do it. And you're going to live. But if you don't listen to me, you will, li you will not live to see 50. And you know something? He was right. My brother, who was a preacher, he lived until he was 50. He died. And I told him, I said, look, man, it's good to read the Bible. It's good to understand the Bible. But the Bible states in the book of Genesis, in the book of Revelation, in the book of Ezekiel, the herbs are for the healing of the nations. 
Why do you have problem with that, preacher man? Mm-hmm. Hey, preacher man, I'm not the man that profess to be godly. You are. And why you read this Bible and you read that the herbs are for healing and when you get sick, you went to get an inorganic chemical. That makes sense, I said. That makes a lot of sense. You also took an interest uh, in short order, Dr. Sebi, in diseases affecting Africans and African-Americans in particular and discovered that natural herbs and minerals from Africa acting on a cellular level, that these were more effective for them. What is, and, and this is something that, 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 that I hear from you in all of your lectures, what is African biomineral balance and why is it so essential and effective in uh, curing different ailments. Did you say expensive? Um, so, so effective. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I said so essential and effective. I don't want it to be expensive because <laughs> we black people don't have too much money. And I, uh, yes. I want to say this. I began my journey in the United States. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was there that I developed the African biomineral balance. And even that, they were against me. You see, when I got to New York, they had a bunch of healers like they are now. A bunch of healers. Oh, I could name them for you. And none of them was healing anything. But they were healers. They are doctors. They call themselves doctors and nutritionists. But they were giving people starches to eat. Some of them were even talking about sun-fried food. But sun-fried starch, you don't do that. Some are offering golden seal. They're offering aloe vera. They're offering peppermint. These things are inorganic and they are hybrids. Oh, I then decided to do research on my own and find out how could I offer something that would be acid free. And that is when the African biomineral balance came into this, this horizon. It surfaced. Mm-hmm. The African biomineral balance is a procedure, it is a therapeutical approach that carefully select from the forest only alkali plants, only alkali plants. That doesn't hold true for golden seal, aloe vera. It doesn't hold true for ginseng or fotiting. It doesn't <laughs> hold true for peppermint. All these things are hybrid and comfrey. Mm-hmm. All these things are bad for you, but we didn't know. Yes. Because we didn't do any research in that area. So... In New York was where I developed the African biomineral balance, meaning by selecting the alkali plant from the forest, Mm -hmm. which is to address the cells electrically. Everything that has life is electrical. The human body is electrical. So it would be ludicrous for me to select something other than that which is electrical to complement an electric body. Electric body, electric food, electric substance. The other part of it is the intracellular chelation. The intracellular chelation means that we are going to clean the cell from a cellular level. Not only the organ itself, but the cells that makes up the organ. Coupled with the nutritionalized part of it, makes up the African biomineral balance. It's a cleansing and a rebuilding of cells organically. Mm-hmm. You, you, you've named a few things that quite a few persons, even those who uh, talk about alkaline diet, have um, touted as being um, some of the best and, and some of the, 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 the Chinese and the Japanese uh, um, stuff. You talk about ginseng, etc. But uh, why, why have you, how, how does this work? Because let me talk about um, Africans as opposed to, say, other races. Is this a, 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 you talk about cellular also, is this directly connected to the, the, the race that you are? Why it doesn't necessarily work for you? What will work for the Japanese will not work for the African? What will work for the Chinese will not work for the African? Well, when it refers to healing, what works for the blacks will work for Chinese and Japanese and whites and everybody because it is organic. It will work for everyone. What doesn't work is the food that the Chinese eat or the food that the Japanese and the Caucasian eat. That food undermines the cellular predisposition of the black man. Why? It is like taking a gorilla and feeding him the polar bear food. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When God placed black people in Africa, 
He did not place a cow. There were no cows in Africa. There were no hogs in Africa. There were no lamb or goats. There were no chicken. So why do we eat that now? Because we have been trained. We have been conditioned. So the time is on top of us right now. The time is on us to really make serious decisions because Africa is being killed right now. Africa, you could find, look, you could find cancer in the Congo in a child eight years of age. That was unheard of in Africa. Because remember now, just go back into history. For us to put things into the proper perspective, as we go back into history, this is what you will find in Africa. There were no doctors. There were no medicine. There were no hospitals. But there were no disease. Why? Because we live according to the dictates of life itself. Not philosophy. Not the philosophy of life. We did not live by the philosophy of life. We did not invent any philosophy. We live naturally. But that word naturally today has been adulterated so much that they even tell you apple is natural or a carrot is natural and not so. We have to begin to now revamp, reconstruct. But it's easy because Dr. Sabi did his little part. Mm -hmm. I got since... I was impotent now. I have 23 children. <laughs> right. the, the, I, we could go on and on. I know you only have 15 minutes with us this morning because you talk later on at Turtle River Park. And I think I don't want you to talk about everything here either. We want people to come to Turtle River Park to see you later on today. <clears throat> but I hear you say apple is, is, is not natural. Carrot is not natural. Well, we understand that, that in the African space. I can't just let it go. I, we, we have to have a, so, an, another comment on you. Why you said that um, so that persons who are listening... Uh, can get that answer before you go. Please uh, explain to us why you say apple is not natural, carrot <laughs> is not natural. Yes. <laughs> you know, I always have that ability and the propensity <laughs> to raise eyebrows and stuff. Yes. But that's me. I always, from a little boy, I remember when I was 14, I mm -hmm. asked my uncle, I said, Uncle, are you telling me that Noah had a boat that he put all these animals in it? He said, Yes. Mm -hmm. You say, well, uh, uncle, did he have penguins on there and, and polar bears too? Did he have ice aboard this boat? Did he have an air-conditioned unit to keep them cold? Mm -hmm. I ask questions. Yes. So now, you asking me to substantiate and to show at least why did I take the position that carrots are natural? Well, where do you go in the forest and find carrot growing? Nowhere. Where do you go in the forest and find any substance that God made that has starch? If God had made something with starch, God is a criminal. God did not make anything with starch. Everything God made is alkali. Why? Because it had to be electrical. Carrot has starch. Apple has starch. Rice has starch. Beans has starch. Look, in 1950s, there was a man in Japan that came out, Dr. Osawa with the microbiotic di diet. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. told my brothers then, I said, hey man, you gotta quit that. <laughs> Ronald, don't eat that rice. <laughs> Ronald continued to eat the rice. Ronald died seven years ago. Yes. See, yes. so anything that has starch, God did not make, it is mm -hmm. unnatural and it is dangerous. Now, we're gonna stop it. I have been around now only for 47 years. There were healers in New York before me and after me. None of them have done what I've done. We went to New York and proved to the Supreme Court that we cure AIDS, that we cure sickle cell, that we cure blindness. We cure. We cure lupus. We're not going to be backing down because the AMA said that you're not supposed to use the word cure. Mm -hmm. Well, I use it. And what's interesting about the point you've made, and you see, you're the one who's doing this, Dr. Sebe, because you're supposed to go, but you keep saying something that, that I, I have to comment on. So let's do this. You, one, what is important about the point you just made? It's not, it's not as, it's not as simple as it sounds. You really did go to the Supreme Court. You were dragged before the court. I was arrested. You were arrested, dragged before the court, had a prosecutor accusing you of making false claims of curing AIDS and, and so on. And you proved in that court that you actually did cure AIDS, that you're actually curing AIDS still. This is what our listeners need to know. Well, that's 
That's not strange for a black man to do. Exactly. You totally know, we, not strange. We, we yes. black people throughout history. We showed what we could do of our abilities. If you go to Russia, the father of literature of Russia was a black man named Alexander Pushkin. And if you go to Greece, the head of the Hellenics was a black man named Zeus. And if you go to Rome and find the first pope of Rome, which was who Gregory, all these men were black. So what's wrong with blackness? Exactly. We're going to leave it there. 